I ask my fellow senators, do these things sound like religious activities to you? Does this sound like an organisation that should be receiving support from the Australian taxpayer in the form of tax exemptions because they claim to be a religion? I have also received correspondence from Campbell Underwood, another former member and another victim of Scientology. She says that while she was working for the organisation in Sydney, she fell pregnant and was put under extreme pressure to have an abortion. When she refused, she was put on a disciplinary program. Carmel also worked for the organisation's financial planning arm and says that when requests for payments for abortions were made by the organisation's executives, they were never questioned, even though all other requests for funds were met with delays and haggled over. Carmel says she also witnessed a young girl who had been molested by her father being coached as to what she should say to investigating authorities in order to keep the crimes secret. Carmel says she was physically assaulted by a representative of the organisation during the argument, during an argument. And when she finally left the organisation, she says information she divulged, divulged during so-called auditing was used by members to discredit her. Carmel says she chose to speak out because she knows there are many more victims of Scientology, many of whom are still caught up in the organisation and who are being physically, financially and mentally abused. Carmel's husband Tim supports his wife's story and says the couple suffered serious financial hardship because of their involvement in the organisation. He says they were forced to pay more than $100,000 to publicise the organisation and for so-called religious texts and courses. It's incredible to think that the Christian Bible is free in every hotel room in the country, but Scientology texts and courses can cost followers their life savings and even fortunes they don't have and feel compelled to borrow. One of the saddest correspondences I've received, and they're all sad, is from Paul Schofield. He also alleges the cover-up of child abuse by the organisation and admits being part of a campaign to cover up the facts surrounding the deaths of his two daughters. Paul says his first daughter, Lauren, who was 14 months old, was being babysat at the organisation's building in Sydney when she was allowed to wander the stairs by herself and fell. She died in hospital two days later. Paul says he felt pressured by Scientology executives not to request a coronial inquiry, pressure he ultimately gave into. He was also told if he sought compensation from Scientology, he and his wife would be ineligible for any other services. His second daughter, Kirsty, who, who was two and a half, died after ingesting potassium chloride, a substance used as part of a so-called purification program run by the organisation. Under the direction of Scientology executives, Paul says he perjured himself to the police and during the coronial inquest in order to protect the organisation. Under incredible pressure, he agreed to lie because he was scared he would be heavily punished by Scientology if he told the truth. It's a decision he regrets to this day. I've received statements from Anna and Dean Dethridge, who claim to have been subjected to physical and mental abuse during their time with the organisation. Anna says she was instructed by the organisation to disconnect from her sister because her sister was gay and therefore, according to Scientology, dangerous, perverted and evil. Anna and Dean also provide evidence where information they and others have revealed to the church have been used to blackmail and control. They also provide more information about coerced abortions. Kevin Mackey wrote to me detailing his 26 years of abuse in the organisation. In his letter, which I've tabled, he says, and I quote, when one begins Scientology, there is nothing weird or space alien about it. In fact, Scientology, as seen by a newbie, is a godsend for a troubled soul. But he goes on to say, once you have taken the bait and become hooked, the real Scientology is presented very slowly over years. This psychological conditioning Kevin is talking about eventually saw him and his wife hand over almost a million dollars to the organisation in exchange for services and products. Other families have contacted me expressing grave concerns about their children who are still under the control of this organisation. 
but they've asked that I don't identify them for fear of never hearing from their children again. Another victim of Scientology, Peter O'Brien, wrote of being discouraged by the organisation from seeking treatment for cancer. She has also provided evidence of being assaulted and cut off from her son while they were both part of the organisation. These allegations are serious and many names have been removed from the letters I've tabled in the Senate tonight. But those names haven't been removed from copies I'm providing to the police. This organisation must be investigated. These victims of Scientology have spoken out at considerable personal risk and I commend them for that. And I would encourage other victims of Scientology to come forward, contact the police, contact my office, but most importantly, speak out. I also believe the activities of this organisation should be scrutinised by Parliament because Australian taxpayers are in effect supporting Scientology through its tax exempt status. I say to all Australians, as you fill in your tax return next July or August, ask yourself how do you feel knowing that you're paying tax yet this criminal organisation is not? Do you want Australian tax exemptions to be supporting an organisation that coerces its followers into having abortions? Do you want to be supporting an organisation that defrauds, that blackmails, that falsely imprisons? Because on the balance of evidence provided by victims of Scientology, you probably are. Do you really want to be funding an organisation that turns supporters into victims in pursuit of power and wealth on the part of Scientology? That's why I'm calling for a Senate inquiry into this organisation and its tax exempt status. In the past, Scientology has claimed those who question their organisation are attacking the group's religious freedom. It's twisted logic, to say the least. Religious freedom didn't mean the Catholic or Anglican churches weren't held accountable for crimes and abuses committed by their priests and nuns and officials, albeit belatedly. Ultimately, this is not about religious freedom. In Australia, there are no limits on what you can believe, but there are limits on how you can behave. It's called the law and no one is above it.